Um, I thought I'd do up this quick video just to show you how to install TTS sound into um, uh, a Hornby Simlico. In this case we've got a uh, Tornado, uh, the Hornby Tornado version, not the Barkman one. Uh, so I'll take you through the uh, fairly straightforward steps um, with a slight diversion uh, for uh, uh, this particular model. So here we have um, the Hornby uh, A1. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to uh, uh, undo and take the body off. Basically there's a screw down in the front here. Um, you just undo that. I've already undone it. Um, it's just sitting right here. Um, and basically horn most Hornby locos are the same. Um, there's a, usually a screw at the front uh, under the smoke box around the cylinders somewhere. And so basically you just lift the body out like that and it's all ready to go. One thing I always do before I do a sound installation um, is test to make sure that the loco runs all right. You'd be surprised at the number of times I've had to do some minor repairs like wires are broken off or contacts are not making contact. So just got a few DC volts here, put that on and away we go. Uh, seems to run all right. Got a flywheel, so it's got a bit of momentum. Uh, works fine in forward and reverse, so that's good enough to go. So now that we've got the body off, I'll just move it over there. One thing that is quite interesting, uh, if I show you this, you can see here there's actually quite a big gap uh, in the front. Um, now, uh, the uh, that means that we could probably put a speaker in the front. The other option is to use the TTS decoder, um, so that's the, the packet that the TTS decoder comes in and basically that's the decoder there. Now you can see it's pre-wired to a round speaker um, that's soldered directly onto the board. Um, the trouble with that is that the only real place you can mount it is in the tender and that means that if you want to do that and do it simply you're going to have to somehow have a connection between the loco where the uh, eight pin board is and the tender now you can choose to do that um, you could choose to put the speaker in there and i've got um, some plugs that i can show you how to do that fairly quickly but in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut off this speaker and i'm going to replace it with this rectangular uh, probably what you'd call a sugar cube i just call it a rectangular driver um, and I'm going to make a little speaker box for that and stick it in the smoke box so the sound comes out from where it's supposed to. So I'm going to build a little speaker box um, here for, I'm just going to use some scrap styrene. Now I do have a 3D printer and if I was um, a little bit more organized I'd probably print up a 3D print box but I want to show you what you can do at home pretty simply. So we're just going to make a little box um, to go into the, the front end of the smoke box here. Now there's not a huge amount of room um, in terms of its width, but in terms of its length, it's actually quite a quite decent length. So what I'm going to do is probably make up just a rectangular box um, to sit underneath it. Um, now if I had my ruler, which I do maybe somewhere, uh, we could measure that fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, it looks like we've got about 20 mils in height um, there uh, quite easily to fit something in. So uh, let's go and make something that should fit in that space. Um, it's looking actually quite good. So let's see how we go. So this speaker driver here is, uh, just measuring that now, is 23 millimeters long by... Uh, 11 millimeters wide, so 23 by 11. So what you what you can do is just make up a box that basically sits. Now that's the speaker driver itself. Now when you want to actually mount this, you actually need to mount it that way. So one, there's the soldering terminals on either side. You can see that that little one there, uh, and then one on the other side here. Um, and so what we're going to do is make a box that fits underneath there and encloses that. Now I'm no um, uh, super audio uh, wizard, there's probably the right length of box to make here but really I'm just trying to fit this. I've found these drivers to be really good. Um, I got these from uh, RS components, you can see here uh, I've already used one uh, on a class 45 
this is roughly how they come uh, and uh, I'm going to try it in this um, they're not too expensive um, I think these are probably about $15 US each um, so not too bad but anyway the box is very simple all I'm going to do is uh, make the the length side here now you make it slightly narrower um, than the total length because you've got to allow for the thickness and two times the thickness uh, at each end for the end pieces so um, this is 40 thou um, styrene which is about a millimeter so we had 23 millimeters in length that means we need a 21 millimeter width and then we're going to have two sides and then the base can be the 23 by 11 to sit on the bottom so um, how high am I going to make it well let's say what's the the depth of the speaker here the depth of the speaker is probably about three and a half mils maybe four mils yeah four mils close so what did I say we had 20 mils there so maybe the total depth um, of the of the box we might make probably around 10 or 12 millimeters high or around half an inch high um, just simply you don't want to cram it too tightly in there um, uh, but uh, yeah so we're just going to make this straightforward box it won't take us long if you've never worked in styrene before it's I, I love working in it it's one of the best mediums I've just got a, a vernier calipers here digital verniers so I'm just going to set this to 21 millimeters uh, hopefully you can see on the thing uh, thereabouts pretty close there we go uh, just a bit over but that's all right so all I do then um, just to do this um, is just very lightly score um, using the tip of the verniers um, just very lightly score that um, always be careful with your measuring tools try not to use them for anything else other than measuring um, so that um, is nicely scribed there uh, just turn those off get your ruler and then get a knife and so I've um, got my knife now that's where I scribe the mark now to cut styrene is really straightforward and simple I've just got the line there basically with the back of the knife now this isn't a brand new blade this is a blade that I've used a few times so uh, I'm not sure how close you can see this um, but the tip is slightly uh, broken off as soon as you start doing any scoring you break the tips um, but I, I like using these as scribers um, you can make up a special tool called a scrawker if you really want to go there I just find this is just as easy so just you know three or four passes there and then so that was with the back of the knife like that uh, facing downwards now I'm going to turn it over and make two scores on the same line that I've just used the the back edge on and that's it so now I'll just break that off and there we go we're cut to size and um, if you want to you can um, even run the back the, the knife blade over the edge like that to just tidy it up because sometimes you might get a little bit of an edge on it right we've got the little speaker box now um, so what I'm going to do is glue the top on now there's a couple of different ways you could glue this um, it used to be that a lot of these speaker boxes were made of styrene or a, or a, a styrene compatible um, and so you could just use styrene glue which I prefer um, I found that that's no longer the case especially with ESU speakers um, you could use super glue um, the, the only risk with super glue is that if you get any on the driver you basically ruin the driver um, I use this um, uh, scenic accent I think it's called what's it glossy accents um, uh, I find it really good uh, and uh, my wife put me onto it she's into paper craft and all of that sort of stuff it's made by a uh, ranger uh, or ink essentials I think they call it up the top there I don't know if you can read that um, and it's a slightly viscous glue but it's actually got a bit of flexibility in it and when it dries it actually retains its shape too so it's really good if you want to add a little bit of surface detail to things uh, and that sort of stuff and that's what they use it in paper craft um, so I'm just going to put a little bit out here on the top um, uh, the only problem with it is that the top um, blocks up very easily so that's why I've got a little pin uh, there to unlock it but basically now always use a toothpick always have a handy supply of toothpicks get that run it across the 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 top of the speaker like so fairly straightforward 
uh, on the edges and a little bit more there on the edges and then we put our speaker on top of the box like so and there we have it and so basically that'll take probably about a minute um, to, to dry so you get a little bit of time to move things around just make sure that you're covering the box um, as completely as possible again we want to try and keep it as airtight as possible that will give us better sound and so here you can see now we've got our little box and um, that will fit quite easily Ooh. so um, uh, just uh, revisiting the box a little bit um, uh, what I found was um, uh, when I had a better look inside the chimney uh, on the top here has a extension that comes down a little bit uh, and that actually reduces the space just slightly so I've just um, all I've done is trim down the box um, slightly uh, um, so it's probably more like um, well let's measure it uh, instead of 12 mil it's probably close to 10 and a half now so um, all I did was just use a, a cut-off wheel and a Dremel at a slow speed so it doesn't um, melt the plastic but cuts it uh, and then just trimmed it and um, sanded it um, so that it was nice and flush again on the bottom so again you know if you find that things don't fit at first um, you know one remeasure you should always measure twice and cut once they said and I, I did measure but I didn't see that that little bit of a spigot inside um, but anyway, um, I'm now going to just fix that. Um, the other thing I did was bevel the edges slightly um, to fit uh, in the in the semicircular bottom of the of the smoke box. So I'll just glue the speaker again. Uh, I'll just put a bit of that that um, uh, glossy accents there and just run it across the edges uh, and then on the ends, one end and the other end um, and glue that to back again and there we go nice fit on there if I don't bump it around there we go so yeah just leave that set aside um, to dry and just make sure it's nice and square which it now is sealing on all edges so um, that'll be right to go in shortly okay so here comes the scary part well it's not really scary at all to be honest um, so this is how the um, TTS Dakota comes as supplied look I'm not a fan of these um, I don't like the sound of them um, myself personally but um, you know they're not they're a good price and if you're um, just wanting some noises um, that sort of sound about right um, these are these are usually a, a good start I would say that pretty quickly once you get into sound you'll find that um, these might be okay if you're um, not that interested in how a steam loco or a diesel loco should sound um, but these are a good especially for younger people um, uh, younger kids and stuff like that who would like a noisy engine these are actually quite a good option for that so all I'm going to do with this TTS decoder I've taken it out of its packet um, you can see here uh, the speakers wired directly onto the board um, so if you want to disconnect the speaker you've got a couple of different ways you if you're really uh, up to it um, you could solder wires directly on there but the wires are already there so all we need to do is just get the speaker out of the enclosure um, uh, like so you can see there's a separate plastic enclosure that's the speaker there and all we're going to do is unsolder those wires off there so we can solder them onto our proper speaker box now um, I've done a lot of soldering I'm used to it uh, and in one of my other videos uh, I take you through some soldering tips uh, just um, to reiterate again um, I use a solder here that I get from uh, a local electronics store out of here in Australia called JCAR that works pretty well um, uh, I've got a reasonable soldering station that I bought um, via eBay. It's a Chinese one. It's got a hot air gun and a power supply um, and everything, and I find that quite useful. All I'm going to do is unsolder the wires off those two points there. So I've got my soldering iron. Always get a bit of uh, iron, a bit of solder on the iron tip. Make sure it's okay if you want to. 
Um, I've just got a, a cleaning station over here, but just wipe the tip, touch a bit on there. Okay, so all you got to do is I'm holding the speaker um, and I'm just going to touch on that speaker, on that bit of solder there till it melts and there comes one wire and now I'll do the same with the other side uh, and just touch the iron on there to melt the solder and pop off it comes. So we've now desoldered that uh, Hornby supplied speaker um, which I mean it's okay it's not fantastic um, in terms of its sound um, I, like I say I do a lot of sound installs I, I have a particular um, ear for speakers um, that I like. Um, these plastic diaphragm ones don't I don't find make a, a good sound. Um, they're quite loud in volume. This is an 8 ohm speaker. So if you're wondering these Hornby TTS decoders need an 8 ohm speaker and that's uh, what I've got here in the alternative driver um, is another 8 ohm speaker that you could use 4 ohm it would give you slightly louder you could actually use two 4 ohms in series uh, and that would give you 8 ohms if you really wanted to go there um, perhaps if you wanted to add some more bass to your sound you could do that um, uh, in the tender uh, but in this case we're trying to keep everything in the loco and th I find these these rectangular drivers here give a pretty good sound for what they are so now I've now got a third hand here, um, uh, this has just got uh, some uh, jaws to hold the speaker in place. Why do I do that? Um, well one, it makes it easier and frees up both hands um, and two, the speaker is magnetic and the tip of the iron is, funnily enough, steel or iron, actually iron and so if you move it close to the, the top the magnet will actually draw the, the top of the iron in uh, or the speaker will rush up to meet the, the iron uh, with its magnets. Now all we're going to do is solder the two wires on there. Now that might sound a bit scary but the secret is have an iron, have it nice and hot. I'm running this at uh, around 400 degrees Celsius. Um, touch a bit of solder on the iron bring it down there um, and actually just touch it on there until it wants the solder and you might be able to see that um, we've just um, uh, put a little bit of solder on there. Uh, actually what I'll do is zoom in so you can see that a bit closer uh, on the next shot. Okay so we're going to um, do the other side now. So uh, touch it, uh, well actually um, I don't know if you can see the tip, it's a little bit dirty um, so I'll just give that a bit of a wipe on my uh, sponge over there, touch the solder on there, bring that close to the job uh, and we'll touch the two and you can see here it's soldered pretty much straight away so it's ready to go. Um, <laughs> and as you can see I shake a little bit when I'm doing this on videos. So um, there's a little bit of solder just on the driver there. So we've got our two wires now. You can see them, hopefully it'll focus on there. And so all we've got to do is solder those two wires. Now sometimes the speaker drivers will have a positive and my, um, negative um, and it's usually good to try and keep that the same if you can. It doesn't really matter on a lot of speakers but on some it does. Uh, and anyway we're going to solder this so it's just a matter of touching the solder to the wire and to the bit of solder that we put on the terminal there. You could trim these wires down, they're not too bad. Um, I'm just going to rest that there and again touch. You can see how quickly I come in and out. The secret here is one, not to have too long a tag end on the um, uh, end of your wire. Two, keep your area of solder small, have uh, a nice hot iron and the idea is to get the heat in quickly and get out again. Um, don't sit the, the uh, iron on there for any length of time otherwise you'll start melting stuff and you'll be in all sorts of pain. So we now have a TTS decoder with its 8 pin plug and a speaker and we're ready for installation. Okay now we're going to do the install. Um, it's very simple. Now here's your 8 pin plug socket. You can pull it out with your fingers. Sometimes I just get a pair of tweezers, lever it off and there you go. Important thing to note is on here you may be able to see that if I tilt it. Um, you can see there's a mark there that says one. I'll just put the third hand down the road. See that one? 
all you've got to do is make sure that that lines up with the orange wire. That's where the orange wire needs to go. Now, on the TTS decoder that I have here, it's got a very, very faint, you may be able to just see it, uh, it's got a number one here, uh, just on the edge. I don't know if you can see that in the, in the image. Um, but you can see the red wire goes over to this one. That's not the one we want. The orange wire actually goes to that terminal. And that's the one that's got to go to number one. So all we have to do is put that down on number one like so, and we'd be ready to go. Now the wires on this actually come back. Actually, before we even do that, there's something that I should have told you beforehand. So we just stop and I'll show you something that we should have done. So you've spent 60 pounds or a hundred dollars, hundred and ten dollars. I don't know how much that TTS decoder was. So I'll have to check the box. But what you can see there is lots and lots of components sitting out there waiting for an errant short touching the metal chassis of the body uh, or um, maybe if you've not soldered very neatly you might have a bit of additional solder we're going to fix that by using some uh, heat shrink so basically this i just went to an automotive store and got a, a packet of various sizes i think it was uh, about ten dollars or five quid thereabouts and so basically what we're going to do is just cut that to the length of the decoder uh, about that long uh, get my handy dandy scissors if I can find them maybe I've even been so efficient to have put them away which I did uh, so um, cutting it just slightly longer than the decoder um, will give us a little bit to actually seal up at the end so I'm going to cut that off like so and I'm going to put it over the 8 pin plug end you can see there and slide it along and it will cover the ends and it'll push the speaker wires out a certain way too so you can see that see how the speakers actually <laughs> stuck to the magnet of the motor so it's all there now and um, we'll shrink that in a minute um, but we might just test it and just make sure that everything works fine. So before you test, don't ever be too uh, much in a rush that you haven't actually protected any blank ends that are open on your soldering joints. Always before you test, um, make sure you cover them in some way, whether that's with insulation tape or my preference is to just use some heat shrink. Um, uh, I've got some here, if I can get a box out. Um, oh. Actually, it, it's finer stuff um, than, than what I have here. So you can see that's, that's some fine stuff. Um, there's actually finer stuff than that. I think this is probably about four mil. Oh no, 1.5, yeah. So that's the size I use for most wires. Uh, where are we? I'll get in the camera shot, there we go. Um, it's actually got the diameter uh, uh, on there, it says 1.5 and that's really useful. Um, I get it in a 5 meter roll um, which is around on my bench somewhere um, and it's really quite handy. Always, always, always protect those open soldered joints. Um, and you know how I know? It's because I've actually not done that when I was younger. Too much enthusiasm and not enough patience. And uh, yes, uh, ruining a sound decoder can be an expensive exercise. So the installation is really simple. Again, like I said, get that orange wire down to pin one um, and just gently push it down and it will seat down. So now we've got the decoder here ready. And um, I'm going to test this now to make sure everything works okay. And then we'll do the final fit in the body. Okay, I've got the power cab hooked up to my rolling road here that you can see. Um, uh, uh, this is my Prozer's rolling road. I found them really good. But look, um, you don't have to have all the fancy stuff. I started off with these um, uh, cheap eBay versions, these, road ro or these rollers um, uh, for HO scale or double O scale bought three of them and they've done me for a very long period of time so while you might see me using uh, lots of different tools um, don't be scared um, of you know you might not have enough tools to be honest all you really need is a good soldering iron um, a bit of good solder and 
Uh, as you can see, we've um, made our own um, baffle box here for the speaker, uh, which you can see right there. I've just got it sitting on that little bit of a shelf thing, uh, which is actually a speedometer um, uh, for the layout. Uh, but anyway, um, what we're going to do now is I've got the instructions. Uh, where are we? Hornby instructions for the TTS. Uh, I was just uh, just looking at the function keys that I need to set it up. So um, uh, for those who've not used NC, I, I've used NC for about 25 years now, I think, um, or a very long time. Uh, I've got it set up here. Um, this is the Hammerhead controller uh, for the power cab. I use this for my programming. So we've got Loco, uh, you might be able to see Loco 3 there, and the functions are on sound 1. We press 1, and surprise, surprise, it makes a noise. Um, we can press the, the whistle button, uh, which hopefully if I move it up there, that one. So it's got... Um, a whistle sound for the chime whistle that's on Tornado and also the um, uh, I don't know what you call it, LNER single note short bell um, or peanut whistle um, which you can hear and now if we adjust the power up oh, hopefully you can see it's making noise So it's all running pretty well. So we're right to do the heat shrink on the decoder and get the uh, speaker installed properly and then we should be right. And there we go. Okay, so now we're going to do the install. Um, I don't know if you've seen one of my other videos but I love this black tack stuff. It's used by professional audio people. Um, quite often um, uh, and so I'm going to use a bit of black tack um, to hold the speaker in place. Some people don't like that, they like to use double sided tape. I found with double sided tape is it gives up over time um, and this black tack um, I find this stuff works pretty well for a very long period of time uh, and um, hasn't uh, caused me any grief. So I've just got a little piece there but um, before we do that, uh, we're going to heat shrink um, the decoder. Uh, so I'll move that into a shot there. I've got my little soldering torch. Um, again, if you haven't got um, that, you can also use a, a lighter, cigarette lighter. Um, you can use the back of the iron, but that um, soldering iron, but that can be a bit messy. These things um, you can pick up for next to nothing. Um, at a lot of the uh, electronic stores, like five bucks, a um, couple of pound um, for those in the UK. Uh, so we're just going to, now I've got this uh, hot air ins uh, insert on it. Um, you can see here the flame comes out uh, of the end there uh, and this thing actually directs it uh, through um, some gauze um, that you might be able to see uh, if I hold it right. Uh, um, but uh, uh, that just makes a nice bit of hot air come out. Uh, so, got that on there, turn it on. Make sure that we've got, uh, you can see an orange glow there. So, we've got some hot air coming out. Now, just hold it up away from everything. Don't put the hot air near your loco. Uh, I'll just do this where you can probably see it. Um, just twist around. So I'm just going to run that up and down. You can see hopefully pretty quickly that it's shrinking. Now the reason we cut it just a little bit longer is it actually closes in over the end uh, and holds everything in place and makes sure things do not move. And that's all we really want is just to make sure that everything's protected and the heat shrink doesn't move. So there we go. We've done that. Turn that off. Put that over there on my damp sponge so it doesn't melt anything. Okay, so now we're going to install in the body. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is get that speaker in and just make sure, now here I'm going to try and get the decoder next to the speaker like that if I can. Uh, I'm going to push this down into the body. So I'm just going to move that in here. So I'll flatten my black tack down a bit, sticking out a bit, so that's a good thing. That means it's going to stick. So 
put that in there, move it along, and it's in there nicely. And hopefully we can get the decoder up beside it. Just get my tweezers in there and just move the speaker slightly to one side. It's stuck in there. Get the decoder going next to it. If it wants to play. Uh, not quite. Let me just get that up inside there. I might just um, wiggle it around a bit. Um, I say don't bore you on the camera and we'll get it all installed. Okay, so with a little bit of wiggling, I've got the decoder um, down one side. Uh, hopefully you can see it if I move that up there. So the decoder's down in there. The speaker's right next to it. Um, if I twist that a little bit, you might be able to see. Um, the black tack is down the bottom here holding it all in place i could move it a little bit further forward if i wanted to but that just gives me enough room to move everything out and now what we've basically got and i'll just zoom back out hopefully uh, there we go there we go um, and so basically what you want to do when you're putting this in is make sure the wires uh, you can see the wires here make sure they go up inside the body now, the way these Hornby Locos fit, there's a little, um, if I just show you there, there, you might be able to see there's a little lip there. If I put my finger behind it, you can see that little lip. That's got to engage in the back end here, just under the firebox. So we can put that in and let it go down. And there it is. It's all in place. So I've got the front bogey around the wrong way, so just be careful of that. Now all we've got to do is screw that back in and we have a loco that uh, has its sound installed and ready to run on the layout. If I can find my screwdriver. So, uh, I won't show you the boring bits but um, we've got a loco now ready to go. Okay, it's on the layout now. We'll give it a, a test just to make sure it's running all right. So that all appears to be working satisfactorily. Um, just trying out some of the other functions. All seems to be good.